What's up everyone and welcome back to part 2 of making art with Procreate on the iPad Pro. Let's check it out. Alright, so we're going to continue from where we left off last time, which was essentially we're drawing these black lines over here at the edges of the screen. Now what I'm doing now is I'm essentially smudging them out. I don't want them to be so pronounced. So I was thinking just smudging them all together like so. Just kind of get rid of this line over here. I'm going to do the same with the other side. missing a bit of ink in the middle there. I'm just going to add it in. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna start focusing on the main part of this image, which is the center of the image. And what I'm gonna start by doing is essentially laying down some extra details. And I'm still using the awesome brush for all of this detail work here. It's just such an awesome brush, I highly recommend that you check it out. I'll leave a link to the brush in the description. And now time for the hand. Alright, that that actually worked pretty good. Now I'm thinking, what is he standing on? Maybe like a cliff or a, like a rocky faced mountain side top something. Yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna use the awesome brush to fill in this, this texture, the ground texture. That actually works out pretty good. Now I'm thinking if the characters might have like some like roots at this point, like, but uh, I'm not sure about that. It doesn't really fit the composition of the image, right? So continuing work on the details of the characters, and I, I feel like these are two personas or two characters which are having some kind of exchange. So I'm gonna see what happens if I fill in this. This one right here, and it's really starting to look almost creepy, like like a sort of like a demon. So let's draw some demon hands. Now I feel like this character is, or this demon is kind of bending over, and he just finished doing some maneuver, <laughs> like striking the other character or something like that, and so his hands are behind his back. Uh, let's see, he needs some eyes. There we go. And some nice looking teeth. Alright, I'm gonna paint the eyes in later. So I'm pretty happy with this guy. Let's check out the other one. Now, the other one needs to be like in a surrendering position and he, he already seems to be in that position. Just kind of give him some hair. But I'm noticing one thing. Because I turned the image on the iPad, the hair isn't falling straight down. So I'm correcting that right now. So now the hair is falling down correctly, like if gravity was playing a role here. Just adding some facial features. Now at this point I'm, I'm pretty sure that I want to draw this uh, character as a woman. 
maybe a pregnant woman because he already has like uh, the features of a pregnant woman the big belly so I'm just gonna accentuate the pregnant belly and add some additional features like this demon is sucking the energy or drawing the life force out of the pregnant woman I it's just getting darker pretty quickly <laughs> uh, anyway so let's see let's try to get the outlines of this baby all babies have umbilical cords That doesn't look right. Uh, let's see. Maybe remove it here. No, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the baby. It's gonna take away too much time from the video. So, so let's continue. Um, she needs some legs. Yeah, something, something like this. Yeah, I think this is pretty much in the way. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, so just gonna remove parts of it. Okay. Just adding some additional struts. So here's a tip for you, if you draw with a pen and then hold down the pen as you make the stroke, uh, it creates a straight line and you can actually move the pen afterwards while holding it down and it will still create the straight line. Pretty handy trick if you want to make straight lines in Procreate. So right now I'm focusing on the foreground, just adding a bit more detail here. All right, so now we get to another character. And what is this one doing? It kind of looks like he's holding something, like this is the face right here and, and he's maybe looking at his smartphone, taking pictures of this monstrosity that's happening in front of him. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think I might actually go with that. Just gonna reduce the hat size. It looks weird. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm not going for authenticity. I'm not... <laughs> I don't really do do a lot of uh, portrait drawings with very accurate details of the human anatomy. Not yet, at least. I'll definitely take a look at that in the future. But right now, I'm more of an interpretation is kind of drawings, whatever that means. <laughs> I kind of like doing these uh, high fidelity doodles, basically. So the light of the smartphone is shining in his eye. Let's do the eyes of the demon. Gonna make it red. And the eyes of the victim. Gonna have that like a light sea blue. And then of course the demon controller, he's gonna have this same color as the demon, the eye color, gonna have that red. And now what I'm doing, uh, I'm basically tapping to pick up the color of the eyes. Uh, basically you can do the same by changing the settings here in the, in the eye trapper, putting that to touch, 
that makes it so you can just tap anyone on the screen and pick up that color right away. It can be very convenient if you're doing a lot of color switching just back and forth, but um, it doesn't really pick up the right color though. Let's see. If I try to get it just right, okay. No, no, yes, okay. Has some kinks, but at any rate, if you're doing a lot of color switching, uh, this is a really handy tool to, to have. So you can just tap anywhere on the screen and pick up that color and just continue drawing. It can be kind of frustrating if you accidentally tap somewhere which you didn't intend to tap, like if you're zooming in, like the first finger touches the screen before the other finger, you actually pick up a color instead of zooming, that can be kind of frustrating, so be advised. So right now I'm just trying to find a brush because I'm basically I want to add some some additional details to the background here. Um, just making the whiteness of the sea pop out a little bit more. Maybe add it also to the background here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not so keen on this. Um, just trying things out really, experimenting. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not really too keen on this. I'm just gonna drop the brightness of it down. So right now I'm just going to select the black layer, the black things, um, create a new layer and essentially start drawing some textures on the black layer stuff. So let's see, I'm just going to select this color. No, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look right. Let's drop the opacity down a bit and try again. Still, no, I'm not too keen on this one, this brush. I'm gonna try this one. It's a custom brush. Um, let's see, drop the opacity down a bit. Can't really see it anymore, so. Okay, okay, maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing something like this and that, and this, and a little bit of that, and then we'll um, work out the the details of it in the effects panel. We can decrease the saturation and, and make it stand out in different ways. So let's do that. We press on the effects and let's see, let's find something that works. Yeah, maybe something like that. I'm not really too keen on the, the yellow color of it, so I'm just gonna change the color by using the hue, saturation and brightness and see if we can find a better color that suits this. Mm -hmm. Maybe just drop the color saturation all the way down and the brightness also. There we go. Now it has a little bit of uh, texture to it. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the composition. So I'm going to select all of the layers, excluding the background. I'm just going to resize it and try to frame it so that the main characters are, are large enough so that you can see them and are positioned in a place that is pleasing to the eye, essentially. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a tool that I really like using, which is the Golden Ratio Calibers. Look at that, aren't they beautiful? So shiny, so pointy. <laughs> so these are the golden ratio calibers. It's a really useful tool if you are, uh, if you wanna try to make your compositions a little bit more pleasing to the eye, essentially. So what they allow you to do is find the golden ratio point between any two points on the screen. So. It's a very useful tool if you want to figure out what, where to place an image or where to place an element on the image composition. 
so you could use it diagonally between two points over here you could use it on the x-axis or the y-axis i'm thinking i'm thinking about using it on the y-axis and having the calipers point to where the composition is going to be so that looks pretty good now let's check it diagonally and we can see that there is nothing happening there so it's a bit of a finicky process i'm just gonna have to play around with the scale of the image so that it uh, basically fits with the diagonal golden ratio point move it a bit to the left here but now the demon hunter is or the demon controller is the main point of interest i think i'm gonna have the the pregnant woman as the main point of interest let's move her to the focus point and let's double check to see if the height is correct yes it all fits now we have the pregnant woman and the demon as the main focus point and the ground is golden ratio aligned to the y-axis pretty happy with that now i'm gonna show you the rest of the image flash before your screen in a fast forward time lapse with that said, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe on this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.